welcome you to Getting Ready with Jamie Cart Ministries. Hey, this is Pastor Dew. The Bible says in Joel 2 and in Acts 2 that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, that his sons and his daughters will prophesy. If you want to find out more about this last day's outpouring that was going on then, this is now the last of the last days. Join us for this episode of Getting Ready with Jamie Cart. You ready? Yeah. God is good. He's got something rich for us tonight, and we're going to receive it by faith. So... <laughs> when I heard that rain just a few minutes ago, I was thinking, whoa, this is such a, a natural thing that we were hearing here in West Virginia of what this first scripture is. And that's in Acts. This is the New Testament. Uh, this is chapter 2, verses 17 through 21. And it says, in the last days, God says. So when you start something and immediately you already see a timeline from God attached to it, it's a big deal because it is so settled that there's a time in God that he has already spoke about. And he is saying that there is going to be, he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Yet there's a time for it. And we see here that Brother Peter is, he is the one the Holy Spirit is speaking through at this point. Now he said that it was in the last days that this outpouring is going to take place. How much more? It's going to take place now. That was the beginning of the last days. So now think about where we're at in time of the last days. And the outpouring, see, Holy Spirit's been pouring. But there's going to be a pouring out of the Holy Spirit. You know, when the Holy Spirit pours out, you get wet on the inside and the outside. Mm -hmm. You get filled up with water, Him, on the inside and the outside. Glory to God. And he says here, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. That's one of the gifts of the Spirit. And it's also the prophet that is also in office. And again, as we're continuing through um, what the Lord has put before us on our plates, we're going to find more and more out about these giftings in detail. Yet in this prophecy, it is said, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. Now again, as we said last week, when you see old men will dream dreams, young men will see visions, that doesn't mean that that is so compartmentalized that only someone of mature age is going to have this and only of a younger age is going to have this. No, it's just saying, know this, boys, girls, Older, younger, are open to all of this at one time. It goes on to say that, that there's going to be wonders in the heavens and signs and blood and fires and pillows of smoke, <clears throat> and the sun will become dark and the moon will turn to blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we see signs. We see visions. We see the outpouring. We see prophecy. We see miracles. And we see salvation. That's all wrapped up inside of this time called the last days. Yet this time is tied to the Holy Spirit upon people. And that is the key, is that the Holy Spirit and people get together. These people will allow Holy Spirit to use them in these ways. <laughs> Glory to God. So we talked last week 
about a few things and and we broke down some walls and the Lord's wanting us to just remind ourselves of these things that we are clearing up, (laughs) hallelujah, from the word. And it says your sons and your daughters will prophesy that your sons and daughters, men and women. So we're seeing here in the New Testament something that is really wonderful and that's that women are called into this ministry with with everybody, amen? And so we talked about um, Amy Simple McPherson and, and all the wonderful things that happened in her life and how she was called to that healing gift that uh, she operated a lot in the gifting of words of knowledge and um, she operated a lot in evangelism. Many people were saved, healed in their bodies, set free and really ministering through the Holy Spirit. And there was times in her life that um, she was literally having these services every day. She also was called to feeding the hungry. And so this feeding program that was ha- happening through the, um, through the depression, she, uh, not, and I say she, of course she had many people in this ministry with her. I'm just saying this ministry. This ministry, they fed the hungry in a time of, in America that, uh, the Americans really needed help. And God, you know, just strategically put her in Los Angeles, California. And, of course, she built uh, a huge building um, that is still being used today. We also talked about Catherine Kuhlman and how, you know, Amy Simple McPherson, her ministry, her life uh, was from 1890. Wow, isn't that something? 1890 to uh, 1944. So then you see someone else kind of carrying that mantle, and that was Catherine Kuhlman. And she came on the scenes in the uh, 40s, and uh, her, her ministry really, really came in the 70s. I had the opportunity to read her, um, her biography, and um, I, I was looking for it today and couldn't find it, and I thought, I know where it's at. It's packed with some books in North Carolina, and... Um, just a lot of amazing pictures of her in there and her ministering and things about her life. Really cool things happened in her life also. So she, again, also uh, operated in healing crusades in the, from the 40s to the 70s. And um, she uh, ventured into media ministry. She had a radio program. She had a weekly TV program. And you know, just many things happened in her life. She was very good friends with Pat Robinson. She was constantly on his show uh, because uh, they would much talk about the Holy Spirit. She loved Holy Spirit. If you ever want to listen to something really cool, you can go online and, and hear her speak of Holy Spirit. She said, Holy Spirit, He's all that I have. Please do not quench Holy Spirit. He's all that I have. She was very um, in tune to Holy Spirit. Very in tune. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, we talked about last week how this scripture has been used. Just really, um, the enemy has used, you know, he'll twist things. He's used it to um, not allow women young women, older women, to be able to minister the way the Lord wanted our sisters uh, to to minister. And you can see in these crowds, there's men and women in these crowds that greatly were touched by the Holy Spirit and healed through these ministries, wonderful ministries. And um, the enemy found a... uh, found a door to twist something in the Word of God. You know, he, he was twisting the Word of God when he was talking to Jesus. You know, he's always been doing that. And so it says here, women should be silent during the church meetings. It is not proper for them to speak. They should be submissive just as the law says. If they have any questions, they should ask their husbands at home, for it is improper for women to speak in church meetings. And so then you see that's in 1 Corinthians 14. You see just a few verses, (laughs) just a few more verses than you see in uh, 11 5 and it says if she prays or prophesies 
So, so when you'd read that, you'd be like, okay, now wait a minute. If she's going to pray or prophesy, how's this going to work? So this is the history. In the Corinthians culture, women were not allowed to confront men in public. And remember, this was in the Corinthian city. They had come out of some real, real idol worship type things. I mean, it's just very, very vulgar type things that was still even going on, but the ones that would give their lives to Jesus, they had come out of a culture that was just something else. So they were not allowed to confront men in public. The men would confront them, and you can use your imagination to know what they would confront them for. Some of the women who had become Christians thought they should ask questions out loud during public worship since they had new freedom. Women of that day didn't receive a lot of religious training as the man did. Their public questions could be asked at home, not interrupting a servant. So this scripture was supposed to be used only to talk about how there was, there was an issue in the church and they had to clean it up, but what had nothing to do about women's role in the church. Amen. Isn't that just, see how, see how the enemy just takes a little bit of twist and, 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 and it, it's done harm. It's done a lot of harm. There's been many, many women who have lived in the earth and went on and died and never knew that they could be used of God. Their giftings laid dormant. Many men and women, that these giftings that came through these women, they never received from them. Isn't that something? So in Galatians 3, 28 through 29, it says, very clear as another witness, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So God sees us the same once we give our lives to Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. And that's a very big, we, we could park all night just on that right there. But, you know, just really see this is that this was this spoken to the Galatian church. And you've got Jew and Gentile, male and female, and everybody, not only are they having their freedom in who they are as a man or a woman, but they're also getting their freedom that now, you know what, you've been grafted in. Not only that, you're getting Abraham's blessing now. It, whether you were born as a Jew or not, I mean, this is a freedom promise for all of us. And what's cool? We're heirs. Yes. We've got the blessing of Abraham too. So just like this was said thousands of years ago, now think about the, the outpouring that is promised for the last days. The first outpouring is a glimpse of what's really going to take place. It's going to be amazing. Amen. And we get to be a part of it. Glory to God. Amen. So the Lord had been talking to us uh, and telling us that he wanted us to minister on gifts and light. And boy, as he took us on some journeys and told us some things. And so we just want to build this, this foundation as we've been talking about this and reminding our hearts and using our imaginations. In Genesis 1-2, we know that the earth was without form and an empty waste and darkness was upon the face of the very great deep. We see that the Spirit of God, everybody say the Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Now say Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. <laughs> was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the water. So this same Holy Spirit that was here, right here, is the same Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. Oh, my goodness. Think about the same Holy Spirit who is right there, and he's waiting, and he just keeps moving. Holy Spirit never stops moving. He's always moving. And he's waiting for the Word of God. He's just waiting for the Word of God. He's just waiting for the Word of God of God to come out of some land, <laughs> some soil, 
so that he can do the work. The earth was barren with no form of life. It was under a roaring ocean covered with darkness, but the Spirit of God was moving over the water. You know, when Holy Spirit's on the move, which he always is, there's always hope of life. Amen. And so we know that, and we've talked about this, that the sun and the moon, the light that came on the fourth day was not the same light that we're talking about on day one in Genesis 1-3. And when God said, let there be light, the very first part of the creating power here is that this light came out of him. Now think of it this way. It came out of him so strong and so powerful that it literally created everything within six days. And that light was doing that. That was the source. The one who was performing it and executing with all that power was Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was the one waiting to just have that word come out of Father. And when it came out, he started performing and doing the work. Glory to God. And because that light be, light was, was so and is so powerful, that light of light be of Genesis 1-3 is still in motion and creating today. And the galaxy is expanding 45.55 miles per hour as we speak. And all of that created light power is used by Holy Spirit to create the galaxies. But what is that light power doing inside of you? What can it do inside of you and in me? Same light, same Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, he's, he's living in us. So you hear that? I mean, this Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is the one who can handle, if you will, all this power, is now in living in us, waiting for the Word of God to come. And when the Word of God comes, then that same light power can start performing. He can start doing what He can. Amen. And he's wanting to work. He's wanting to do the work. So light be, light was in Genesis 1-3. Light equals power. Light equals power. Amen. Everybody say it with me. Light equals power. Now, this is one of our verses that we're speaking out loud every day. And we did this also in December. And the Lord is just really um, teaching us something more than I ever, when, we, when the homework was uh, decided upon, I did not see what I see now. It was through us all walking through this. We're all walking through this. Um, it's almost like a journey. We're just kind of, walking through it and seeing something else and this journey that we're taking it's like we get to see other windows open and other doors open james 1 17 this is in the new king james version it says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above so when god gives you a gift when he gives you a gift one of the gifts that that father gives is the fivefold ministry which is the apostle prophet pastor teacher anybody know the last one evangelist and so this fivefold ministry the bible talks about that these are actual um if you will seats that are given and they're gifts to us and they do the work to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Glory to God. So every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light. Now think about what we just said. Light be, light was. 
He is the father of this creative power. And in the scripture, it says the father of lights. Now, when he said light be, light was, that was singular. So why is it plural? Because he's talking about his children as the father of lights. That's you right there. That's me. The father of lights. Amen. Amen. Put your hands on your say, The father of lights. Amen. So, does that mean we're the children of the sun and the moon? No. We are the father of that creative power of light be, light was. And that's our father. And the gift of this has come to us, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. I'm, you know, the more I um, am learning about the authority that, and, and just the goodness of God, the more I'm learning about who I am in Christ and how powerful we really are. And that's why the devil tries to make the church believe that we have no power, we have to go along, we have to put up with all these things. Is because he understands when we understand who we are, game over. It's just game over. He don't have no game. He has no game to bring to us. If he, if we start understanding how much we can resist him, and we do it, he has nothing. He can't get to us. Remember Job? That's what he said. You got a wall around him. Amen. 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 So light equals power, equals gifts. So look at it again. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And it comes from the Father of lights. And this light is the power. And the gifts are power. So light equals power equals gifts. Amen. So another thing that we mentioned last week, I'm going to bring it up again, is that this is another thing that the enemy has stolen and tricked lots of people in the church into believing. And that is that praying in tongues, praying in the spirit is of the devil or it was only for that day at Pentecost and all these different made up things. And a lot of times people make up things not because they, they're trying to be mean, because they don't have the answer or someone else told them wrong and they keep passing it on that's just truth right so the Bible's very clear very clear if you're going to address any issue let the word be your first and final authority amen, amen. so if someone has a question say well let me see and if I don't know it I'll get back to you Amen, right? So it says, So my dear brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy. This is New Testament. And don't forbid speaking in tongues. Hmm. Is it being forbidden in places? Absolutely it is. Absolutely. But the Bible's very clear. And people says, well, it says you have to have an interpreter. That's an entire different thing. We're talking, that's the gift of tongues and interpretation. This is about speaking in tongues. This is your prayer language. Two different things. Amen. 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 So, very clear about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why are we talking about this? Because light equals power equals gifts. Who is the power? Holy Spirit. So we can't be afraid or ignore that we have to pray from our spirit. Amen. Amen. John answered, saying to all this, John the Baptist, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So Jesus is the baptizer. Okay? Now let's go to Acts chapter 1. Go to Acts chapter 1. And if you are new using your Bible, just go to the New Testament. 
and you're going to go to keep, go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then the very next book is Acts. Okay. Now, what's really cool um, when I think about this is that um, this is where the Lord really just taught me something <laughs> about the baptism of the Holy Spirit because I was always taught that it was not of God. I was taught it was of the, of the, of the devil. I had heard messages that it was only for that day of Pentecost and it is no more. Um, <laughs> so I was taught wrong, um, very much taught wrong. And um, not that I harbor anything, it's just that was just the way it was in my life for many years. So when I uh, was asking the Lord about this baptism of the Holy Spirit, is this real? Is this of the devil? What is this? And he so gently taught me in the Word. When you go to Acts 1, let's just go to um, verse 3. Now before this, Jesus is already raised from the dead. He appears uh, to the disciples behind locked doors. And for that first time when he met them behind those locked doors, he says, he breathed, he didn't say this, he breathed on them and then he spoke, receive the Holy Spirit. So they received the Holy Spirit just like when someone gets born again at that moment. Then you get into Acts and it says, during the 40 days of, after his crucifixion, so this is on past that time when he breathed on them. And he appeared to the apostles from time to time. So this is more than just one time. And he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the until the Father sends you the gift. Ah. So this is a gift from the Father of light. He promised, as I told you before, John baptized with water, but in a few more days after I'm finished talking to you, this gift's going to come, and you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, when you see this all put together, and you see that it is Father who sends the gift. Jesus is the one who baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. All three are involved with this beautiful gift that comes to you. Father sends it. Jesus submerges you in Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit fills you up on the inside and on the outside. It's wonderful. It's a baptism. That's why it's compared to what John was doing in the Jordan. Hallelujah. so much for watching Getting Ready Today. This ministry is called to reach the law and to help the bride of Christ get ready for the wedding day, which is the rapture of the church. All this is made possible through the faithful prayer and financial support of our partners and friends. If you would like to become a part of the JCM family, please contact us. Also, send us your prayer needs and praise reports. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, keep getting ready. Jesus is coming.